on today's episode of Gathering the Kings. There are just some things that you're not going to be qualified to do. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're Elon Musk or, or you're Trevor Sumner. You know, there's going to be things that somebody else is going to do better. And if you're willing to bring somebody on and partner with them and, you know, navigate some of the friction that will come with that, yeah, you're going to be better off for it. You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up, everybody? Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast. Today, I've got Trevor Sumner here on the King stage. My brother, how are you? We're here, finally. Chaz, we made it. Doing well. I appreciate you being here. The listener doesn't know we weren't having technical difficulties. I was projecting my technical difficulties on you somehow. Uh, We got it figured out and we're here now. (laughs) Freaking out, but we made it. We did. What kind of business do you have, my man? I own a solar energy business based in the Midwest. So we do residential and commercial solar panel installations uh, across four states. Love it. What are the four states? Where are you at? Illinois. Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa. And then we do a little bit of business in Florida because we, yeah, we're always looking for an excuse to expensive, expensive flight down there in the wintertime. So a hundred percent. I had the same people ask me the same type of mindset when I bought my uh, edible arrangements location in Pensacola, people are like, why, why Florida? My answer, why not Florida? Come Mm -hmm. on. It is the Um, sunshine state. So. It is, especially here in the Midwest when we only get nice weather a couple, really couple months, but your neighbors to, to me here in the Kansas City area. So I'm excited to have you on. Before we jump into your story, I want to know what makes you tick, man. Like you're building a business, you've been uber successful already, but you're still like going after it, showing up for podcasts, kind of fun stuff, building relationships. Why? I just, I like to stay busy and I like to see what's out there, what's new. So that's a solar energy is fairly new in terms of a product or service, right? So yeah. what we try to do is we try to take that from a culture standpoint at Sun Badger. So we're always looking at new technologies, new relationships. We're pretty big on adopting, especially things like Slack. Slack is yeah. an awesome technology that we've got at the company. Yeah, I'm always just looking for ways to make the business better and faster and also more fun. So we got a lot, we had a lot of fun here. I can appreciate having fun in business. Not everybody... Not everybody thinks fun and business go together. Crazy guys like you and I do. Yeah. What's the bigger picture for you? What's, is there like a life mission attached to solar or maybe business building? What's Trevor really about? I like to say we're trying to figure out a way to save the environment and get rich at the same time. Is that possible? Are those two sides of the track? It is not. It is definitely possible. And there are a whole bunch of people doing it right now. So yeah, so that's, that's what we're working on. I would say big picture stuff. I love the outdoors, so I really love the idea of owning a business that is trying to help the environment, right? And yeah. creating a better place for my son. I got a four-year-old, so there's a lot of passion in my work there. I want him yeah. to be able to grow up in a world that he can go and hike in a forest and swim in a lake and enjoy the outdoors like I did and my dad did and my grandpa did. That's cool, man. Outdoorsmen, fishermen, hunters, anything like that, or just hikers? Yeah. What, tell all me the lineage. The, I'm from Wisconsin, so all of the above. Yeah, and we drink beer. So. Right? Yeah, I've, yep, I'm a big, I'm really big on exercise okay. in, in, in my professional life too, just in, in terms of staying healthy mentally and physically. Yeah, yeah I tend to end my, end my work day on my bicycle and I try to get in maybe 20 or 30 miles. The trick is to buy a really nice set of headphones like AirPods. Uh-huh. And you can actually do conference calls sometimes on your bicycle and nobody is the wiser. Interesting. I might have to, I might have to try that. You think I could pull off a podcast on the bike? A podcast might be tough, but you could definitely do a conference call, especially if you just mute most of the time. Right. Just, that's right. I, I wonder, just I got one of those, and answer. Yeah. I've got one of those like indoor where you can take your bike and yeah, bring so it inside yeah. and, and do the deal. 
I wonder if I just, I could just set it over in the corner and video, I can still do the pod. You can do that. Yeah. <laughs> it might, I might be a little out of breath, but that's all right. I love for me, the empty space that mm-hmm. the road allows. So I love where you're going with that. Okay. So <clears throat> you're, you're pretty purposeful. You're doing this thing for some bigger stuff. How did you get started? Was this the first business? Did you get started in another business beforehand? Give us your this history is, a little bit. Yeah. This was the first business that, that I founded with my business partner. I got a job in solar energy from, okay. from my business partner. He was my boss at a previous company. So okay. yeah, we had a good relationship and we were pretty successful at that other firm. And we saw the opportunity in the industry and got some money together and he and I became business partners. Now I don't have to listen to him anymore. <laughs> Not my boss. That's right. I can collaborate now with him instead right. of just taking directions from him. No, he's yeah, he's a great guy. And he, he had been in the industry for a number of years before that. Got and it. then I got lucky. I married his sister. So now he's my yeah. brother-in-law as well. Yeah. Now you guys are, you're really. Now we're hooked. in it. You're in yeah. it. Tell me from an angle of like mindset, entrepreneurial mindset, did was that something that you already or always had beforehand and it just finally illuminated itself or did have you established this over time? I would say the opportunity kind of just presented itself and I ran with it and I was really successful. And I, yeah, I think that's for anybody listening, right? Just looking for those opportunities and taking a chance. When we started the company, my wife was pregnant with my son, and it was just he and I and maybe two other employees, and I was on the road, and he was back behind the scenes working on the website. And then from there, we just added people. I just used the talents that I had, and I learned and made a lot of mistakes and learned some more. I don't have any formal training. I don't have an MBA. I'm a dropout, right? College dropout entrepreneur. So there was a big learning curve for me. But I think that brought a lot to the table because I had ideas that were outside of the box and I was willing to make some gambles and take some risks because I pretty much, I had nothing to lose. Why in that moment, do you think that you were maybe prompted or maybe you were prepped for that type of entrepreneur, like that jump, that opportunity that you're talking about? If rather than maybe looking for another job, just at another company or building with someone else, but you, you saw the opportunity to do it yourself. What was unique about this opportunity? I had been successful selling solar energy for a different company and I found it to be pretty easy. And so the opportunity presented itself for me to do it myself. And I figured I would be pretty successful at it. And, yeah. and that was really it. It was something I was already good at. It was something that I really enjoyed doing and I was yeah. passionate about. And I just figured, well, why not just try to do this on my own and, and form this company? And then the way that a company organically grows, it's just incredible, right? You start with four or five employees and then you hire a couple here or there. And then before you know it, it's Sun Badger, at least you got 116 employees across four states and would never have anticipated being in that place. You wouldn't, I, we didn't start the company thinking, Hey, we're going to be at $45 million in four years. We started the company thinking, Hey, we could probably do this on our own. Maybe we'll make a decent living and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I love the simplicity of where it's come from. Like you just said, like we just just got started. It just made sense. I was already good at it. And it's obviously trickled into this very successful thing, as you're saying. So I want to dive into some of that. I want you to go back in time though, to maybe year one or two I want you to identify a good decision that you made that you can share with the listener that has ultimately led to a bunch of your success. The best decision I made was coming to terms with the fact that I am not going to be the best at everything the business needs. Okay. And just realizing that right away, like realizing yeah. that maybe I'm not the best person to manage the finances of the company. There are probably people who have a lot more experience than I do. Yeah. So I'm talking really about recognizing your strengths and weaknesses as a, as an entrepreneur or a business leader. And yeah. then my, one of my favorite words is delegate and just delegate, find the right people and start carving out like that organizational structure at the company. And there's some surrender that comes with that, right? You start a small business and you got a lot of control and you got to be willing to give up that control bit by bit. Yeah. But it is the probably the most important way to grow a small business into something larger is to start delegating and relinquishing. Yeah. How, <clears throat> was there a moment? Was there a spot for you where you got frustrated and finally gave it up? Or was that a talk from your ex-boss that said, dude, you got to let go of the reins? Like, how did you come to that conclusion? Or was it over time? Uh, the, I got sick of paying bills, physically paying them. 
the task and that yeah the task of paying them and trying to trying to come up with a way of logging that and i guess that was just one event in many that that taught right. me that lesson but it was just like i don't like doing this i'm not very good at doing this you're going to be better at it and let's get that person in here so i can do the things that i'm good at yeah. um, and then focus on those yeah that that moment that you just described i think every entrepreneur listening right now has felt that now, whether they've taken action like you have to go find the person and get them in place is like step two in that. Yep. But that feeling that you described of whether it's the accounting process or whether it's managing salespeople or doing sales or doing the fulfillment, whatever it is, we have those moments where we're like, dang, uh. <laughs> it feels like you're like walking through quicksand a little bit. And, and so the answer for you that you're sharing with the listener right now, just make sure I'm clear. If you don't like it, if maybe you're not so great at it, it's probably a pretty good indicator that there's somebody that you could find and hire and delegate. Oh, hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're waking up and you're staring down a task that you're dreading or you're putting it off and you're in a position to get somebody else to do that for you and do it better. What, I don't, what would be the argument not to delegate right. that task? Yeah. So simple. I think a lot of entrepreneurs, and I'm going to, I'm going to flip this on its head here for a second, because I want you to share your opinion on this. I think a lot of entrepreneurs find themselves capable, right? Maybe they don't love doing the, you know, logging of the expense and paying the bills. I'm good at it. It's fine. It's not, but they don't have that, oh, I'm dreading it or staring mm -hmm. it down. They had this overall arching, I'm overwhelmed. I got too much. They would probably agree to that, but they don't know how to necessarily say this task right here. I'm like staring it down. And I'm really like procrastinating. So let me delegate that. Just, they have this overall feeling of frustration. I'm overwhelmed. I'm wearing too many hats. Mm -hmm. Say to that person, cause you just made it sound so simple. Identify the task, hire somebody, move on. What would you yeah. say to that person? Yeah, in terms of what overcoming the obstacle that or yeah, I yeah. Maybe they haven't identified I, the, the actual task or, or motions because they're pretty good at maybe most things. Oh, sure. I see. Yeah. For me, it was rec again recognizing what I was really good at and and the value that would bring. And then lining it up in some sort of just quick calculation with the other task that that we're talking about. Yep. Okay, I could log these expenses and I could probably do that every day. I'm capable of it. I don't necessarily yep. enjoy it. Or I could go out and I could sell a commercial solar array and that would generate $150,000 in revenue. And I'd be much happier and better at that. That's a quick formula there, right? Yeah, yeah. So now I'm getting rid of, now I'm delegating that expense logging and I'm focusing on something that's going to be generating revenue for the company, moving the company forward, something that I'm good at and something that I like doing. Yeah. Yeah. The point there that you made so beautifully and so almost easy that it just rolls right out of you is that you identified the things that you were the best at. It, yeah, you're capable of the entry, the logging, the data, whatever. Or in some people, they might say, I'm capable of doing that sale. But really, the back-end systems, I'm really good at, or I heighten myself um, yeah. uh, from that. And so maybe I need to delegate the sales process or wh whatever yeah. the, the task is. But that I And that idea, that that is top-down at least at our organization, right? From a culture standpoint, if you're doing something and yeah, you can get through it and you can do it, but you're not passionate about it. Or if you're better at something else, then we encourage at Sun Badger, our hundred plus employees, we encourage them to find out what that is and, and let their managers know, Hey, here's the role I'm doing. I like it. I'm not great at it. Particularly, I could be doing this better or just moving through the organization. So we try to right. create that type of that type of openness and dialogue with our employees. Yeah, 100%. I love it. Okay, let's flip the script. What bad decision have you made, especially early on that uh, you can steer us clear or steer the listener clear? I bought TV advertising in our <laughs> first year. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Tell us more. That, I mean, yeah, that was that. If you're talking about a particular decision. Yeah, yeah, bought TV advertising, big TV package, and didn't even have the didn't even have the process or the pipeline set up to to really track and and figure out how much value or what the customer acquisition cost was on that piece of advertising. So, yeah, yeah just oh, took a big old stab. Just let's just see what happens. A, yeah, yeah, and they got me because they're like, hey, you and your business partner can be on the commercial, and it's going to be broadcast across all these channels. And yep. at first, I had my friends and family texting, "Just saw you on TV! Oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you!" And then I looked, and that was like a 10th of the operating account just to do that commercial. It's like, oh, sh that was yeah. a bad call. Yeah, yeah so good. I would say, yeah, I would say, yeah, spend your dollars wisely early on and, and look at your budget and say, hey, is this something, is this a nice to have? 
or need to have. Am I buy, am I spending this money because it's gonna it's in the right interest of the business, or am I stroking my ego with this purchase? Yeah. yeah. What I didn't hear you say is to not spend money. What oh, I heard no, you, you say was, spend money. was yeah. to be careful. Okay, so yeah, gotta give us money. give us some more thought there. Give us some mindset there because you obviously got to spend money to make money, especially on marketing. It seems like you were in the right vein. You were trying to get new customers. Yeah, yeah, but and what we but what we hadn't figured out at that point was our best customers come from an entirely different area of marketing, right? Not TV advertising on a regular Box Six channel or something like that, right? They're coming from digital ads and whatnot. But it took a little while for us to figure that out. Yeah, you've got to spend money. One of the things that we're I'm really big on, especially when you're in a high growth company or a high growth industry, is hiring before you're desperate for a person in that role. So I, you know, if I need a certain employee and I think I need them 45 days from now, I generally try to hire them early every time because the last thing you wanna do is be behind the ball on a crucial hire or even just a hire that you need to keep the wheels moving. People need to put two weeks in. People need to go over their job offers. They, they're they gonna negotiate. Some people don't even show up for their interviews or their first days. You know that, right? You could yeah. interview a person twice, make them an offer. They they negotiate with you and then they finally accept it. And then their day, first day of work comes and they just don't show up. Yeah, one of the things that we benefited from was hiring ahead of time and, and putting the pieces in place to be successful on that end, on the personnel end. That's a great, great piece of advice. I would highly agree with that. The mindset that's on the other end of that, though, is you know, the, the reason why they wait so long is because they were trying to get by without that person to begin with yeah. because <laughs> they, they didn't either want to pay or maybe cash flow they as didn't well. Wanna, yeah, or they didn't want to delegate. Or they didn't want to delegate that I'm capable. They're like, well, I'll just keep doing that. I'll save that. I'll save that $55,000 a year salary and I'll just keep doing this. Yeah, yeah and, and I hate it. Cash flow holds can hold everybody back. So I guess it would depend on the business and where it sits from a right. capital standpoint to, to make the best decision. But I, yeah, I always generally err on the side of hiring earlier than later. Yeah. Yeah. I love the mindset there. Tell me about a process or maybe it's a discipline now. So fast forward to today's world. How do you make decisions now in the business, in your life, that type of a thing? Decision-making at Sun Badger, at least, is now done on the executive level. So we've got, I've got two primary business partners. And so the three of us make the, make the majority of the large decisions. But we also, the three of us, each work in a different sphere of the company, which means sure. that a lot of times we're streamlined, we're, we're going through our own projects and, and working on things off to the side, but then large decisions we collaborate on. And then, yeah. But then, you know, because we've got over a hundred employees, we obviously give authority to people below us on the organizational chart to make decisions without even asking us. So yeah, I, I, looking more like a corporate kind of structure as time goes on, as the company grows. Yeah. Yeah. Early on, I, I just tried to operate on, okay, what is this going to do for the business in the long term, in the short term? Is this in the best interest of the business? And I learned my lesson after that TV commercial. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I also so, read. I also reread my emails generally before I hit send. I know that uh, seems like a really. It's so good. Oh it's man, so good. It's really valuable. Yep. Reread your email before you hit send, and not necessarily grammar. I don't really care about. I'm actually yeah, no. really bad about grammar, and uh, and I also don't waste a lot of time with. Hey, Chaz, comma new paragraph. It was great speaking with you yesterday. I'm just following up on the, no, my emails generally consist of three or four lines with no intro and no outro because I write over 150 emails a day. And if I, if I add five or six fluff sentences to each one, I'm out wow. probably 30 or 45 minutes. Yeah. But I do reread them before I send them to make sure that the message that I'm trying to get across is there. I also, when, if I'm, I don't want to say under the gun, but let's say something's got to get done quick, or maybe there's a fire that's burning. Yeah. I still take my time and think about the decision and even run it past another person because there's very few decisions. There's very few fires that are going to burn your company or what you've built in the next 30 minutes, right? Like it can probably burn a little longer. So take your time, ping somebody if you've got a mentor or a partner and, and figure out the best solution. Try to be proactive. Don't yeah. be reactive. Yeah, I love that. In, in the midst of all that, you're you're saying that quick decision making is a positive skill set. Yep. But you're also calculating. It's not just feeling decides. Although some some decisions go like that, 
Yep. Especially on some of those bigger things you're saying, hey, it's okay to pause. I was just talking to a guy, I think yesterday or day before about this idea of this emergency. And he had gone on a five-week RV trip and first big major, <clears throat> you know, step away from his business, a little bit of a stress test and sure. his team did great and that was fine. But he had this realization that if I have cell phone service or not, there's not really a whole lot I could do for him anyway, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's next week, we'll take care of it. It's no big deal. And then what that does in that moment, what you're saying, even if it's just for that moment to let it burn just a few more minutes or another day is it yep. gives you freedom. It gives you poise to be able to process properly, whether it's an actual issue, if you're traveling and away with your family or a decision that's on an everyday basis. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, oh, it helps to keep things in perspective too, right? right. Is it really a fire? Is this... <laughs> And early on when we started the company, right? Every negative Google review was a fire. And we learned very quickly that uh, that was not good for anybody. Being reactive and there's a one-star review, Go call that customer up, figure out what happened and how do we get that taken down? Or what do we call a bunch of other customers and get them to bury that review? And that was the way that we reacted to that five right. years ago. And just learning, hey, you're not gonna be able to please everyone. That's not a fire anymore. That's a cost of doing business. Yeah, understand. And I think to your point, it's, I guess there's other people who in our organizations sometimes that feel like it's a fire and they're going to bring it to the table. Like it's a fire. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and for a small business and for a small business owner. Sure. I get that. My wife owns a wedding coordinating company, oh, okay. fancy events in Milwaukee and Chicago. And it's, and she's a owner operator, sole proprietor. And so for her, very small business, still very passionate about reviews. And so she would consider that a fire. Yeah. where they're at right now in their business life, their evolution. But right, we, Sun Badger has obviously grown to know that's right. not a huge priority. Also, having partners is big. I've benefited from the fact that I've had some amazing, talented, and hardworking people that were with me from the very beginning to lean on. I know it's a lot harder to grow and scale your business when you're doing it by yourself too. So anybody out there who is struggling, right, they might want to look for a plus one. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's interesting that you bring that up because you don't really hear a bunch of people talking about that. In fact, usually what you hear the talk is stay away from partnership, stay away from family, stay away from that. <clears throat> but I can, I can't tell you how much, for sure seven figure, but a lot of eight figure and a lot of even nine figure guys, they're like, yeah, it's all I do is joint ventures or all I do is yep. partnerships or we roll up stuff together and then we sell it or whatever. It's yep. a collaboration is a whole nother level of mindset. Yeah, there's, yeah, people are powerful together, right? And I'm big on, on partnerships and leveraging other people's experience and knowledge in areas that I don't have it. And we spoke at length earlier about there are just some things that you're not going to be qualified to do. It don't, doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're Elon Musk or, or you're Trevor Sumner, you know, there's going to be things that you're, that somebody else is going to do better. And if you're willing to bring somebody on and partner with them and, you know, navigate some of the friction that will come with that. Yeah you're going to be better off for it. Yep. hundred percent. I love it. All right. I want to come at you a little different angle here with the speed round questions. Okay. I want you to take your entire business, this lightning, the lightning round. Okay. The lightning Fresh. round. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The speed round. I want you to take this entire business. I want you to dwindle it down for me to okay. one trackable metric. If you can only pick one to track forever and ever, what would it be? One trackable metric. I would say enthusiasm. Ooh, okay. It's metric. And it's not really right. trackable from a numbers standpoint, right? It's an yeah. intangible, but yeah, enthusiasm for us is probably the number one. That would be enthusiasm about the industry in general. It would be enthusiasm from our customers, which right now in the solar industry is at the top. I Everybody's know. excited about solar. Excitement and enthusiasm makes everything so much easier, so much more fun. You come to work, totally. you're happy to be at work enthusiasm in our employees. So yeah, my metric is enthusiasm. And a lot of what I do too, is I travel around to our different offices and I try to, I try to gauge the enthusiasm or the positivity there by interacting with the staff, listening to the conversations that they're having. If people are complaining about their job, then I'm doing something wrong as president, right? If people are pumped about what they're doing and they're laughing and they're joking around and things like that, that's a huge indicator to me yeah. that I'm doing something right. Yeah. I love that. Love how it trickles down into all areas, client, team, even you, you, your family, like all that yep. trickles into the personal life as well, I would assume, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm enthusiastic. And like I said, I got a wife that's an entrepreneur too. So that's an interesting dynamic. We stopped giving each other business advice about four years ago. Uh, so that's off the table. 
So that, that, didn't happen. And that's okay. Anymore. That's okay. It's you, totally you, okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Learn my lesson on that one. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there, my wife doesn't have a business, but I still unfortunately make the mistake of meddling in certain lanes that she owns. Mm-hmm. Clearly she owns this lane of our life. Yeah. And, and I just need to remember not to. Delegate. I suppose yeah. it's not a delegating when you're married. It's more a, the, the surrender it's a, aspect. It's a, it's a surrender it's a, partnership. Yeah. yeah those yep. are maybe some better, better words. I want to know a book that you'd recommend specifically for a six figure business owner who's listening today. They're not at 45 million. They're trying to scale. They're trying to figure it out. Man, you're going to, you're going to get me here. Cause I just do, I do not read. Well, you listen, books. you got podcasts. Yeah. What, what do you suggest? Yeah, I guess for me, less less about media like books or podcasts and more about mental and physical well-being like if i can go that route with it yeah for me that's huge in my professional life is is keeping myself healthy in my mind and my body so that means obviously exercise and diet is big we try to practice some meditation at our home in the mornings and in the evenings really disconnecting from work can't speak highly enough about that practice having a hard stop. And again, being a a dual business owner household, it was really easy for us to just work all the time. And what I found is when you're grinding like that all the time, what you're producing is actually not as good as it is when you take some time to disconnect every day and you come back fresh. So those would be the, those would be the practices that I would preach. Love that. What's your thought on networking or even masterminding with other entrepreneurs? Yeah. Great idea. The more okay. people you can talk to, the better. I'm, I love LinkedIn. Most of the time, people are just trying to sell me leads and shit like that. And whatever, that happens. But every once in a while, there's a good nugget. There's a good connection on there. I take meetings all the time with, uh, with people that, that hit me up on LinkedIn or other platforms like that, just to hear what they have to say, to hear what they've got going on. Sure. Definitely networking within your own industry is important, but also connecting with people in other verticals and looking for opportunities there or hey if this is working for a enterprise software company hey right. maybe there's something that can i can apply to my business yeah. Yeah. yep that's huge okay i've got an operational question for you if you only had 1 hour each week to work on your business what would you do in that 1 hour to successfully run the business like you do now i would find within that hour the best and most efficient way to make my staff if i had one hour yep if i had one hour because yeah. again happy employees and a happy are gonna are gonna run a better company yeah that's right all right i got my last question here for you trevor you ready hey. yep if you lost it all what would you do uh, i would start over again just like that just that man start over yep if, if i lost it all i'd start another company if that was what i wanted to do Sure. Uh, and I love doing it. I love running a company and growing a company. So yeah, I would, and I would try to learn from my mistakes, what made me lose it before, but I like how you I said, just, try <laughs> yeah. sometimes, sometimes we're, we got to go to the school of hard knocks. That's right. Make, we got to make a, I've made the same mistake a number of times. And I'd say, this is the last time I'm not going to do that again. And maybe the oper- the scenario comes up again and maybe I don't remember, or maybe I talk myself into that, trying that solution again. And yep. Yeah. It happens to all of us actually. And we kick ourselves, but I think eventually, like you said, we try to be intentional about yep. paying attention to those mistakes and being able to correct the future. Okay. You've been incredible. We've just, I can, I now understand from a verbal perspective, how your emails go every week because mm. man, we've just been boom right through the show. I love it. Knock um, them out. Hard hitting content for sure. How can the listener connect with you. Is LinkedIn the best way? You got, how yeah. would you suggest they reach Yeah, out? Trevor Sumner on LinkedIn. Connect with me there. We've got our website, sunbadger.com. If, you, if you're in the Midwest and you want to learn about solar energy, if you want if you want to just talk business or network, then yeah, LinkedIn is probably the easiest way. I'm pretty responsive on there to uh, connection requests and I respond to direct messages every day. That's great. You've been sensational here today. Thank so you thank for you. having me. It's been a lot of fun. Of course, funny story on some of the other examples that you've gotten a hold of people or maybe not real people, but I'm glad that you know that I'm real now. You're real. Yeah. I'm real. And I'm happy to be on Gathering the Kings podcast. That's awesome. Trevor, you've been uh, incredible again. Blessings to you, your family, your businesses. Thank you. And, and I'll let you get your hand to. Thank you for being here. Great. 
Thanks for listening to Gathering the Kings. We hope you got a ton of value today and learned a thing or two about taking your business to seven figures and beyond. If you desire more and want a community around you to help you get there, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. That's gatheringthekings.com. And I want you to apply for our next Becoming a King 90-Day Intensive. We are extremely exclusive by nature as a group. What that means is that we're really wanting only the entrepreneurs who take their business and targets super serious to apply. So if that's you, you think you got what it takes to level up your business, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com and apply. And we will see you on the other side.